Hello ladies and welcome back to Christian Ladies Etiquette School where we are doing an intensive study on Christian manners. I hope that you're having a good week. Last week we talked about having reconciliation in our relationships and why that is such an important thing when it comes to Christian manners and ultimately in obedience to God as his children. And today we're going to be talking about the method of obedience because it's not always something that comes natural. It's something that we need to work at. But when we look at it as something that is a part of our Christian lives and that we need to put into practice, it makes it much more practical and helps us to understand that it takes a lot of um, effort on our part as far as uh, whether we're going to live in the spirit or live in the flesh. And so uh, before we start, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the ladies that are here today. Dear Father, we thank you for your word and how it guides us and directs us in life. Dear Lord, I pray that we can understand what your word is saying today and that we can put these things into practice. And I pray, dear Father, that uh, we could put them into practice in our relationships with brothers and sisters in Christ uh, as we are all a part of the same family and you are our Father and you have instructed us on how to live, dear Lord. We just thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. We thank you for giving us your word. Please guide and direct today. Please help me as I teach your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's get started. As you may hear some background noise today, I am with my kids downstairs. Usually I do these videos when they're asleep at night or uh, some other time when uh, my husband is available to be here and watch them. Uh, but today I have a lot to do this afternoon and so I really wanted to get this done before it got too late um, and then I had a lot of stuff going on yesterday and couldn't do it yesterday so that's why uh, I'm kind of doing it now so you may hear a little bit more <laughs> background noise than usual um, but I'm thankful that we can do this lesson and uh, that we can see the importance in it but you know, we really ought to be thankful that God has given us the tools to live according to his will. Sometimes uh, we might say the common phrase, if it's God's will for my life, I will do this or that, or I will act a certain way in a relationship or in any given situation. But God has given us many known things that are his will and they're found in the Bible. So we're going to look at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And this, uh, many of you are probably very familiar with this portion of scripture, um, but we're going to read it and uh, study it for just a second. But it's 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And you can also look at the reference verse that goes along with that in 2 Peter 1.21. The word all here, we see it says all scripture, uh, it's not to be confused. Um, it's not anything alongside the Bible that is written. Uh, this is referring to the Holy Scriptures that are found in the Bible, which is ancient holy texts that can be traced to the origins and the original writers. These writers were given inspiration of God to write his word. It's important that we understand this and the Bible as our final authority on how we find instruction and how we live our lives as God's children. Uh, there's probably many good articles out there written by many well-meaning people, but if it's not based around the Word of God, then where, where is that instruction coming from? Is it just coming from their feelings? Is it coming from their uh, convictions? It has to come from the Word of God if we're going to live by it, okay? So when we follow God's instructions found in His Word, we will be fulfilling verse 17, which we just read, uh, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we need to recognize that the Bible has everything that we need to live in God's will. The unfortunate circumstance that we find ourselves in though, is that even 
Though we are saved and are dead to sin and a slave to it no more, we still have our sin nature. We can see this struggle in Paul the Apostle when we look at Romans 7, 14 through 25. And we will see a struggle that Paul deals with and frankly that we all deal with. Uh, and that's Romans 17, 14 through 25. For we, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin, for that which I do, I allow not. For that I would, that do I not. But that I hate, that I do. If then I do that, which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is, not, that it is good. Now then, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. And I wrote this um, in kind of a side note. It says, living godly is not a natural attribute that we possess. Some Christians may become frustrated in their life because they can't get victory or living the Christian life seems foreign to them. And it may be that they don't understand the method of Christian living. Once we understand that it is a choice rather than an attribute, it becomes more attainable. And that is where the method, God's method, comes in to help us. And we're gonna continue in verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But then verse 25, wow, that was such a major struggle, right? And I think that we can all relate to that at some, in some way or another. We all can, we all know that we have a sin nature. I know I do, I know that I struggle with impatience and, and other things that I have to work out. But verse 25, it really uh, sets us on a path to understanding that we don't have to live uh, so much in that struggle to where we are defeated by the flesh. Okay, so let's look at verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So right there we see, hi Isaiah. So right there we see, so then with the mind, with the mind, that's the key. With the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Okay, so here we see Paul's battle between his new nature in Christ and his old carnal nature. Both natures are still a part of him. Both natures are a part of him. He is not a slave to sin any longer, though. So do you see that in verse 25? He is no longer a slave to sin. He has a choice. He has a choice to choose. Excuse me. Where I was was that um, we see that um, Paul has that battle between his new nature and his old carnal nature. Both natures are a part of him. He is not a slave to sin any longer. And we see that in verse 25, with the mind he can choose. Before he was saved, he didn't have that ability. And we're gonna see that in God's word, okay? And um, then uh, we also see that, like I just said, Paul has been changed mentally and so we and spiritually to be able to choose to live for God. So how can we have that same victory over our flesh? 
uh, it's important that we understand something. And let's look at Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. It says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all, all of us, every single one of us had our conversation or our life, the way we lived in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, and let's go back a little bit, the desires of the flesh and of the mind. See, at that time, the mind was completely focused on carnality. There was no spiritual aspect as far as God's spiritual, God's Holy Spirit directing us. Um, and we'll look at that too. I don't want to get too, too far ahead of myself. Okay. And we're by nature. We were naturally the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And that word quicken is very important. And we need to look at the definition of that. To quicken together means to make alive with. The word quicken means to make alive, to revive. Once that, that um, you know, just think of someone who is uh, sadly having to be revived by a paramedic. They, they are uh, needing re revive, revival. They're needing to be made alive. And that word quicken means to be made alive, that they were we were dead in sins. We see that in the, uh, this, the portion of verses that we just read. We were dead in our trespasses and sins, and we were quickened. We were made alive uh, with. And all believers are made alive to the spiritual life with Christ imparted to them at their conversion. So once you were saved, you were born again, you were made alive to the things of God. You were made alive. And so we see that we have the ability now to live for God. We have the ability now to live for God. So before, uh, before we were made alive to the spiritual life, we were dead to it. Um, and, but God doesn't want his children to continue to live as though they are still dead to the new life in Christ. We see this in our next set of verses. Uh, and this is where we see the method of Christian living. And if I haven't met mentioned yet, it's a choice. We see many Christians who seem to be somewhat defeated in their Christian walk, or maybe they're not growing. They're not growing spiritually. Uh, and it's sad, and it, God doesn't want it to continue that way. He wants them to grow. He, wants, he doesn't want us to stay uh, spiritually babies. And we know that that uh, is possible because the Word talks about it. It says that, you know, some Christians should be eating meat, but yet they're still drinking milk uh, because they haven't grown in their life, in their Christian life. Okay, so we need to see that there is a method to that, that, that it takes, uh, it, it takes cho uh, a choice to live for God and to reject sin. So let's look at Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. So he's saying, okay, you're saved now. You need to walk a different way. See, it's a choice. Having uh, the understanding darkened. Now, these are people that uh, don't know the Lord. Okay, they have their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because, now look at this, because of the blindness of their heart, the blindness of their heart, who being, and frankly, it's not their fault, it's just their natural state. <laughs> and that was our natural state before we got saved. Who being past feeling have given themselves up to lasciviousness to work all, unclean, all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Now here's the method here. That ye put off concerning 
the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So we see here that a lot of our victory in this Christian life and the ability to have good Christian manners is based on the fact that God has made us alive, like we read, and not only for eternal life, but he has made our understanding alive. We can choose with the mind. We can use our mind to live for God. We can say, okay, I'm not going to do this, or I'm going to do this. I'm not going to sin, but I'm going to choose to live for God. Okay, so we can now choose to live for God, which is such a blessing. How can we do this? Well, let's look at Romans uh, 7.25 and verse 23 again. It says, um, I'm sorry, I have to go up uh, in my notes here. Romans 25 and in verse 23, it says, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity the law. And I'm sorry, that was verse 25 that I was going to look at. It says, and I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And then Ephesians, uh, that's where I got confused. Okay. And then in Ephesians 4, 23, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we, we can choose to live for God, but there is another piece to this puzzle. We must be renewed in our minds. How are we renewed in the spirit of our mind? Well, many of you probably know uh, the answer to this question, but let's look at Romans 12 too. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's that will of God, okay? So now, now let's look again at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, which was at the beginning of our lesson. It said, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So when we look at that, we see that everything that we have to be able to live for God, to love God supremely and love our neighbors as ourself is given to us by God. It's made possible by God. First, his grace to even make us his children. For, for by grace are you saved. His grace has made us, it has made it possible for us to be his children. Um, and what a blessing that is. And uh, then we see that, um, let's see here, I lost my place here. His action of making us alive unto spiritual things, that was made possible by God. His action of quickening us to make us alive to spiritual things, which opens our understanding and he, uh, and he has given us his word that allows us to understand his will. He's given us his word to allow us to understand his will. And as we submit to his will, when we read something in the Bible and we say, okay, I need to live in obedience to this, uh, the Holy Spirit tram transforms us, effectually producing the fruit of the Spirit. Everything that we are as God's children is due to the power of God. It is due to the power of God, and we can see him work if we understand our part in the process. So let's look at Ephesians 4, 22 and 24 again. So 22 says that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And 24 says, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So there we see that putting off, we see a putting off and a putting on. God says, put off the former life, 
before we were saved and put on the new. It is a daily decision to follow what we have learned from God and his word and to put off the things that are against his will. Okay. In 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hebrews 5.14 says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are full that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We submit to God's will found in his word by practicing it, putting it into practice. You know, practice makes perfect, doesn't it? Here we see a partnership between us and the Holy Spirit. We see that our rejection of things that go against God's will will give way to a spirit-produced transformation. We see that it takes effort on our parts daily to choose to put off the old nature and to put on the new. If we practice sin, we will be good at it. If we practice godliness, by the empowering of the Holy Spirit, we will live lives pleasing to our Father. We will choose to forgive, ask for forgiveness. We won't gossip. We will love our neighbor as ourselves, and so on. Ladies, I hope this lesson was helpful to you. And I know that it was a lot of information and a lot of uh, deep uh, information. But ultimately, to understand this is very... Um, it is very important to our growth as Christians and to our obedience to God. And it will ultimately affect our relationships uh, when we are obeying God, when we go and put forth the effort in what God has said as far as uh, when someone has wronged us and we go and seek their forgiveness or when we've wronged, wronged somebody and we go and... Um, we go and try and have reconciliation in that relationship. Um, we will not gossip when we are living for God because we see that gossip is a sin and we will take off that part of our life and we will put on what God has said and loving our neighbors as ourselves and conducting us in such a way that we start to see what God is doing in our lives. We start to see this godly fr fruit being produced and enabling us to be able to do something that we couldn't before, before we knew God, before we were his child. And you see, ultimately, God is teaching us how to be his child, and we can live it out when we take off the old man and we put on the new on a daily basis because both of them are present with us. And now we have the ability to do that because God has opened our understanding by making us alive. Our understanding is no longer darkened. We are made alive to the things of God. And what a blessing that is. And to recognize that we, ha we um, are given that ability to be able to choose to live for God is very important uh, in our walk with the Lord. And it will help our growth as Christians so that um, we don't have to stay stagnant and stay in the same place. Um, and, uh, it's, it's an incredible blessing, uh, to be able to have God give us victory over things that maybe we didn't know that we could have victory over and that, uh, God can, uh, produce things in us that we didn't ever think could be possible because we are submitting to his will. We are allowing the Holy Spirit to renew our minds and ultimately renew our lives uh, in lives that are honoring and glorifying to our Father. And in that way, we will have proper Christian etiquette. We will have manners that please our Father and that um, allow us to have relationships that are just a blessing 
not only for ourselves, but for others, that we can be a blessing to others. So I hope this helped you ladies. I'm praying for you. Thank you. This went a little bit longer, but that was a lot of information and you may need to pause it and come back um, and read Ephesians 4 on your own. There's so much wonderful information in there. Um, do a, a word study uh, in your Bible app uh, or on your online Bible and uh, website, whatever you use. Uh, do the word study, Fruit of the Spirit, and uh, just look at that and look at uh, what God can produce in our lives when we're submitting to His will and what we see in His Word and when we allow uh, that to uh, to be a part of uh, our choices in living for the Lord. And may we choose to live for God and to not live for the flesh uh, because we know, as the Bible said, uh, what dwells in us is no good thing. But uh, God has given us every tool and he has made it possible it, it's not within ourselves he's given it all and what a blessing that is what a good father we have okay ladies i hope you have a blessed day bye